I invite Brother Amin Jafri, please welcome him with salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحمن الرحيم والفجر وليال والشفع والوتر والليل إذا يصر هل في ذلك قثم لذي حجر ألم تر كيف فعل رب بك بعاد إلى مهذات الإمهاد التي لم يخلق مثلها في البلاد وسمود الذين جابوا صخر بالواد وفرعون ذي العوتاد الذين اتغوا في البلاد فأكثروا فيا الفساد فصب عليهم ربك سوت عذاب إنا ربك آل بالمرصاد فأما الإنسان إذا ما ابتلاه رب فأكرمه ونعمه فيقول رب أكرما وأما إذا ما ابتلاه فقد عرى عليه رزقه فيقول ربي أهانني كلا بل لا تكرمون اليتيم ولا تعاذون على تعام المسكين وتأكلون التراس أكلا لما وتهبون المال هبا جما كلا إذا دكت الأرض دكا دكا وجاء ربك والملك صفا صفا وجع يومئذ بجهنم يومئذ يتذكر الإنسان وعنى له الذكرى يقول يا ليتني قدمت لهياتي فيومئذ لا يعذب أذابه أحد ولا يؤثق وصاقه أحد يا أيتها النفس المطمئنة ارجعي إلى ربك راضية مرضية فادخلي في عبادي وادخلي جنتي صدق الله العلي العظيم صلى على محمد وعلى محمد جزاك الله جزاك الله Thank you as always brother Amin one more salawat for brother Amin ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad سلام کے لیے میں درخواست کرتا ہوں 
سید ذہن حسین سے کہ وہ آئیں اور مولا کی بارگاہ میں کلام پیش کریں بر محمد وال محمد سلوات محمد والے محمد بلندر ایک اور بار سلوات نکلا ہے جنازہ کوئی اللہ کے گھر سے نکلا ہے جنازہ کوئی اللہ کے گھر سے افلا میں کشور ہے ماتم کے اسے سے افلا میں کشور ہے ماتم کے اسے سے افسوسی کے مسجد میں نمازی گیا مارا افسوسی کے مسجد میں نمازی گیا مارا کچھ کم نہیں یہ حشیر قیامت کے اثر سے نکلا ہے شبیر کو یاد آگئی خود اپنی سکینہ شبیر کو یاد آگئی خود اپنی سکینہ زینب کو ہٹایا گیا جب لاش پیدے سے عباس ذرا زینب مزتی سے خبیدار عباس ذرا زینب مزتے سے خبیدار فریاد میں ہٹ جائے نہ چادے کہی سے سے فریاد میں ہٹ جائے نہ چادے کہیں سے سے یاد آ گیا زینب کو وہ پہلو شکستہ یاد آ گیا 
زینب کو وہ پہلو شکست رومال ہٹایا گیا بابا کے جو سے سے نکلا ہے ہاں بھولنا جانا انہیں کوفے کے مکینوں ہاں بھولنا جانا انہیں کوفے کے مکینوں کے گزرے گی اس شہزادیا اس راہ گزر سے نکلا ہے زینبی سے یہ کہہ دو کہ وہ دل کھول کے روئے زینبی سے یہ کہہ دو کہ وہ دل کھول کے روئے شبیر کی ہم شیر ہے رونے کونا تیسے شہبیر کی ہم شیر ہے رونے کونا تیسے نکلا ہے جنازہ کوئی اللہ کے گھر سے سلوات جزاک اللہ جزاک اللہ یہ تھے سید زین حسین جنہوں نے مولا کی بارگاہ میں کلام پیش کیا ایک اور سلوات پڑھی علی محمد و آل محمد بارے دیگر نعرے سلوات
पे हैं अले और हिजरत की शब रसूल के बेस्तर में है अली और जन्नत अली की मिल्क है कौसर और जन्नत अली की मिल्क है कौसर पे है अली और हर जा अली दामन बचाइए हर जाले मिलेंगे न दामन बचाइए बचनाले से है जहनो में जाइए मेहराब में अली है बर मोहम्मद वाले मोहम्मद सलवार एक और सलवा तला मोहम्मद वाल मोहम्मद मुन तजिम का बे का पहुँचा सफा के लिए बे का पहुँचा सफाई के लिए और एबुतो अब और घर ढूंढो खुदाई के लिए और एबुतो अब और घर ढूंढो खुदाई के लिए का बे का पहुँचा सफाई के लिए और आए का बे की जमी पर जब से है दर के कर आए का बे की जमी पर जब से है दर के और जाए सजदा बन गए सारे खुदा के लिए जाए सजदा बन गए सारे खुदा के लिए मुन एक सलवाद पढ़ी वाला मोहम्मद वाले मोहम्मद पहुँचा सफाई के लिए और कहते थे अबास में सका हूँ फौजेशा कहते थे अबास में 
سکاہو فوج شاہ اور خون کے دریا بہا دوں گا ترائی کے لئے خون کے دریا بہا دوں گا ترائی کے لئے ملتظم کعبے کا آپ پہنچا سفا اور دو کیا مرحب کو جب حیدر نے بولی ظلف دو کیا مرحب کو جب حیدر نے بولی ظلف اور ہاتھ ایسا چاہیے تیغا زمائی کے لیے ملتظم کعبے کا آپ پہنچا صفائی کے لیے اور مجھ سے جو چاہیں لہد میں پوچھیں اب منکر مجھ سے جو چاہیں لہد میں پوچھیں اب منکر آگئے مولا میرے مشکل کشائی کے لیے آگئے مولا میرے مشکل کشائی کے لیے ملتظم کعبے کا آپ پہنچا صفائی کے لیے اور اے بوتوں اب اور گھر ڈھونڈو خدا ہی کے لیے ملتظم کعبے کا آپ پہنچا صفائی کے لیے اور کربلا جانے کو دل بے تاب رہتا ہے کب کربلا جانے کو دل بے تاب رہتا ہے کب جس طرح تڑ پہ کوئی تاہر رہائی کے لیے ملتظر کا بے کا سور فاتحہ ایک اور صلوات پڑی علی محمد و آل محمد زخمی ہوئے جو ہے در سفدر نماز میں زخمی ہوئے جو ہے در سفدر نماز میں شمشیر ظلم چل گئی سر پر نماز اور گلگو ہوئی جبین منور نماز سر تا قدم لہو سے ہوئے تر نماز سر تا قدم لہو سے ہوئے تر نماز اور صدمہ ہوا یہ سن کے صغیر و قبر زخمی کیا نماز میں کل کے امیر زخمی کیا نماز میں کل کے امیر اور مسجد میں آئے شبر و شبیر نو اس حال سے علی ولی آئے وان اور سر تا قدم تھا جس میں مبارک لہو 
लिपटे गले से दौड़ के कह के पिदल लिपटे गले से दौड़ के कह के पिदल और दामन से दोनों खून जबी पहुँचते गर्द उनके मुँह की खुद शहदी पहुँचते गर्द उनके मुँह के खुद शहदी पहुँचते और थे दम बदम से आदा नबी जादियों थम था नहीं था खून शहे शाह और बाशिंदा गान यस रब बतहा को था छुप छुप के रोते फिरते थे हर सुहसन छुप छुप के रोते फिरते थे हर सुहसन और की आहद को थाम के नजदीक जो रंगे जनाब शेर खुदा सब्ज हो रंगे जनाब शेर खुदा सब्ज हो और उम्मुल बनीन दौड़ी ये आबास से बेटा चलो सबों को बुलाते हैं मुर और यूं आए ले के साथ कयामत हुए अपना बिसर बरहन बिसर भी बरहन अपना बिसर बरहना बिसर भी बरहन और मुंह पर कली थी खाक यती मान जाम बर में सहे ले बास था काला अमाम बर में सहे ले बास था काला अमाम और फरमा चुके जो सबको वसीयत इमाम आपस को गले से लगाया बना और बोले सिवा है ओम्र में शबेर शक इनका रहे ख्याल मगर मेरे मैन इनका रहे ख्याल मगर मेरे मैं और इन में न हो कसूर वफा के जो काम होशियार तुम तो हुसैन से अब हम तमाम होशियार तुम हुसैन से अब हम तमाम और अब्बास से ये कहते ही चुप हो गए तकबीर गश में है दर करार ने और जैनब हुई यतीम कजा मुर्तजा व हसरता के जान बदन से निकल व हसरता के जान बदन से निकल और दोनों जहाँ के मालिक को मुख्तार मर आई निदा के है दर करार मर आई निदा के है दर करार मर गए जख्मे हुए जो है दर बर मोहम्मद वाल मोहम्मद सलवार Momenin, at this time, I request that your phones are silenced. Parents, please ensure that your children are seated next to you throughout the duration of the majlis. And I request you all to move forward closer to the mimbar as I request our respected resident alim, Alana Sayyid Rizwan Rizvi, to recite tonight's majlis in honor of Amir al-Mu'minin Ali ibn Abi Talib, alayhi salatu wa salam, with a nice and loud salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Oh, my God. 
صلی علی محمد و آل رحم الله من قرأ سورة الفاتحة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستمع إلى السورة المستقيمة سراء الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين Before I start, if I can just ask you to move a little bit forward. There's room, plenty of room on the right side and the left side over here. You can move forward as people will walk in. They'll just sit right back there. With a loud nara salvat. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. الحمد لله الذي قصرت أن رؤيته أبصار الناظرين وعجزت عن نعته أوهام الواسفين الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين خاتم النبيين أبي القاسم محمد وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين الذين ذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا أما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى وقوله الحق وهو أصدق القائلين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم حامي والكتاب المبين إنا أنزلناه في ليلة مباركة إنا كنا منذرين فيها يفرق كل أمر حكيم صدق الله العلي العظيم سلام Shabbat Shahadat, the night of the martyrdom of Amir al-Mu'mineen, night which also coincides with the night of power, Laylatul Qadr. Indeed, we send our condolences to Imam of our time on this night upon which not only just the family of Ali is weeping, but there isn't a stone, or there wasn't a stone that didn't weep on Ali ibn Abi Talib. And of course, the mazlumiyat of Amir al-Mu'mineen that he felt, especially after the wafat of Rasulullah. You will, inshallah, take out the tabut, the shabiya tabut. And inshallah, there will be plenty of giriya. And don't hesitate to shed tears tonight for your mola. I recited these ayat from Surah Dukhan. This is the third night in this series of majalis. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in these ayat begins with huruf e muqatta'at hameem. Quran is a book of miracle. Every ayat of Quran is a miracle. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave this book as a mu'jaza to our Prophet. And while people are amazed with the mu'jazat of previous anbiya, the mu'jazat of previous anbiya left the moment the previous Nabi left this world. 
But the beauty of the mu'ajaza of our Prophet is that even after his departure, this book is Javidan and forever to be. But of course, this book needed someone who can explain what's in it. But on this particular night, Jibreel Amin calls out, Tahabdamat wallahi arkanul huda. That indeed, the arkan and the elements of guidance have been brought down. Wantamasat wallahi nujumus sama. And indeed, the stars, the shining stars, have been extinguished on this night. Qutila Ali al Murtada. Indeed, Ali ibn Ali al Murtada has been martyred. So, with this Quran that is with us, which is a mu'ajaza for us, every ayat of Quran serves as this mu'ajiz numa. This should be with the guidance provided by Ahl Bayt. A code of conduct for us, something which is part and parcel of our lives, should not be something which is used occasionally or put to use during the month of Ramadan or emphasized on the nights of Qadr, but it is something which should be in our daily routine. What is your daily routine when you wake up in the morning? If Quran is not part of your 24 hours, then of course Rasulullah will have the, all the right in the world to complain to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment. So let's not be amongst those who are the manifestation of that complaint of Rasulullah. Tonight is also the night when you perform the amal of Laylatul Qadr. Although we recite this dua, Joshin Kabir, on the night of 23rd, we had the opportunity, we recited it two nights ago as well. This dua which is filled with sifat and the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I wanted to initially before speaking about some of the merits of Ali ibn Abi Talib and the Masaib, touch on one segment of this dua, Joshin Kabir. Because even with this dua, we don't do justice. We want to read it as much as we can and quickly get it done with. Sort of become like a formality that we need to recite these things without pondering much onto it. And... I'm not blaming anyone because I'm also part of this as well. We want to read it as much as we can. But then you get opportunity in majalis to understand what you read. So when you read this dua, inshallah, on the night of 23rd, focus on this particular segment. The 22nd band of this dua like all of the segments of this dua, our important 22nd is something which is Mawrida Tawajjo tonight. This dua begins in this 22nd segment like this. We say, Ya man azhar al jameel, wa ya man satar al qabih. O oh, the one who reveals the virtues, O oh, the one who conceals the vices, Ya man lam yahtekis satr, O oh, the one who does not disclose the disgrace of his servants. Now, of course, we read it through it quickly because we want to read this dua. You read the translation underneath as well, but you don't have time to ponder over this. So here, take. Five minutes, ten minutes in the speech here tonight to ponder over this. What is being taught over here in this dua? 
Yaman Azhar al Jamil, the one who reveals the virtues and the one who conceals the vices. That is the reason we call Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be Sattarul Uyub, the one who covers our defects, the one who puts a layer on top of it and does not make it to be a public knowledge. With that said, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had made this to be public knowledge, you know what the Rawaya says? It says, Law taka shaftum ma tada fantum. That if we were exposed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if we knew each other's uyub, we won't even bury one another. We won't even be hadir for the mayyat and the janaza of one another. The literal words is Law taka shaftum ma tada fantum. If you were to do makashaf or kashf of others, uyub, you will not even be burying them. Imagine. I sit on the member right here in front of you. You treat me with respect, but if you knew my inner secrets. You'll be like, this person does not belong on the member. This person doesn't belong in the mihrab. You will stop from those practices. Why? Adalat will be gone. Thank God that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept this satr upon me, keeping it hidden and concealed from your eyes. Why had it been revealed? You won't even bury me. You won't even be hadir in my janazah. That's why how many times have you recited this in Dua Kumail? Kam min qabihin satarta. Allah, how many qabih vices that I have that you have covered for me? How many? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one of his sifat is that he is sattarul uyub. You know, when you do tawbah, and we talked about tawbah yesterday, that brief example of you landing on the wrong side of the highway and either it is because of ignorance or because of heedlessness or because of stubbornness maybe stubbornness was not explained properly you're going in the wrong direction someone tells you that you're going in the wrong direction and you show stubborn no no this is right i know what i'm doing but when you do this stop and you make that u turn remember this story you take the first u turn and you come back what happens then? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells Kiraman Katibin, forget those things that you had written about my servant as far as his bad amal are concerned. He removes it from the Namay Amal and the effects of where that bad deed was performed on the land, Allah removes those effects from the land as well. If I committed a sin, there was a time Allah makes kiraman katibin forget. There was a place Allah removes the effects of my sin from that place as well. That is just merely by performing this tawbah and returning back to your Rabb. And you know, Surah Yasin says, Al-yawm nakhtimu ala afwahihim wa tukallimuna aydihim wa tashhadu arjuluhum bima kanu yaksibun The day when your mouths will be sealed and everything else will be speaking. Your hands will be speaking. Your feet will be bearing witness. Every other ava and jawari will be speaking except your tongue. Because if you had been given your tongue, you would start justifying right away. No, 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 that was not the case. So the tongue will be sealed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make this tongue forget the sins that were committed. Merely if you are able to return and take that U-turn and come back to him and do this tawbah. So one of the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is while he's sattarul uyub, he wants to see the same in us as well. All the atrocities committed by the brothers of Hazrat Yusuf, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not disgrace the brothers of Hazrat Yusuf. Kept the lid on their atrocity for all those years. They committed that crime. They wanted to kill their brother. They threw him into the well. 
35, 40 years pass between these two events until they meet Hazrat Yusuf again. Only when they see eye to eye to Hazrat Yusuf والسلام, that they feel remorse in what they had done. But in between these years, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not disgrace brothers of Hazrat Yusuf. Why? He's Sattarul Uyub. So when he's Sattarul Uyub, do you think it is only for him? Or is our responsibility as well to pick up on covering and keeping a lid on people's mishaps? If I am to find out about someone, should I go ahead and share it with everyone? And these days you don't need a mic and a member to share. You have your social media in your hand. To send it as far as you want and far reaching. There are five elements, brothers and sisters. I know there's been a lot of chaos in the sisters, so I hopefully they are listening right now. If you are listening, sisters, uh, please send a loud nare salwat. I don't know if it was loud enough. One more loud nare salwat in the sisters. I know it's tough. You come with your little ones, and it's very difficult to keep them calm and quiet for too long. And, you know, with that said, you're making an effort to be here and to be with family, to be in congregation, so that you can all, we can all be part of this ibadat, right? And therefore, if there is up and down in this, if there are ebbs and flows, inshallah, we'll forgive each other, we'll overlook each other. But lend a hand to each other. Help each other out. Forget and forgive. Even if someone raised their voice onto you once or twice. So that you know everyone else can also take part in it. Over here, the unfortunate part is that brothers can see me. They can see me so they keep that in mind and they don't talk normally. Most of the time. But in the sisters, they're always behind the curtain and they're always looking at the screen. And so it's very difficult to keep the focus while you're only staring at the screen. It is as if you're looking at the TV at home. So therefore, there's this tendency to neglect that others are also listening and sometimes it becomes haphazard. Inshallah, we will help each other. Staying focus, not just throughout the majlis, but inshallah, throughout the amal as well. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Very quickly, five elements. God protects us with his sattariyat. Five elements. He keeps our honor. He does not let our honor. I have built this honor. May it be false and fake. But I have built this honor for myself and I want to keep that intact. One move and of course this honor can be gone. But I can lose this honor with my own hands. But as far as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is concerned, he will keep a lid on it. That's the beauty. What have I done, O oh Allah, that you're so mehrban to me? He said there are five things that you can use and can do to ennoble yourself, to attract towards your, for yourself the sattariyat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number one, if a person wants God to hide, hide his defects, this person, Rawaya says, Man satara akhahul muslim fid dunya falam yafdahahu satarahu allahu yawm al qiyamah. And first and foremost, while I care for my honor and my dignity in this world, I'm more worried about my honor and dignity in the hereafter. So the Rawaya says, whoever on or whoever covers and hides the defect of his brother, Muslim brother or sister in this world, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and does not spread it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep his, will keep his honor and respect in the hereafter. I've been asked to ask you one more time to please get up and move forward with some vacant spaces over here with a loud nara salwat. So whoever shields a Muslim in this world, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will shield him in Qiyamah. Hazrat Musa and Hazrat Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, 
Once Hazrat Isa was walking with his companions and he said to him that if ever you saw your brother in faith, laying, sleeping, resting, and some of his body parts were exposed. You know, happens if you go to Ziyarat, if you go to Hajj and Umrah, people instead of going back to the hotel, they'll just take a nap there. And while you're wearing your ahram, let's say some body parts are exposed. He said, what if your brother or sister, their body parts were exposed, what would you do? Right away, the disciples and the companions of Hazrat Isa said, we will cover it. For example, if something was exposed, we'll go ahead and put a cover on it. Hazrat Isa responded by saying, not only that you won't cover it, you'll further expose it. He said, no, 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 that's not how we do. We've been taught well by our parents and by you that if we see something like this in our fellow brother or sister, we will go ahead and cover them. Hazrat Isa repeated, no, no, no. Not only that you won't cover it, you will further expose them. He said, how? So they understood that Hazrat Isa was not physically talking about removing clothes from the body of an individual. Rather, Hazrat Isa was talking about how when we find out about someone's secrets, instead of putting a lid on top of it, we go ahead and further share it with the world. And that is exposing them. That is something which is not permissible. And if you do that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not keep your honor on the day of judgment either. There was an alim in Mashhad al-Muqaddas by the name Agha Mirza Mahdi Isfahani. He said, I was in the haram of Sayyid al-Shuhada, Imam Hussein ibn Ali, alayhi wa salatu wa salam. He said, a young man walked in and he said, Assalamu alayka ya Aba Abdullah. Everybody goes and they all say, Assalamu alayka ya Aba Abdullah. He said the difference was, as soon as he said, Assalamu alayka ya Aba Abdullah, we were able to hear, Alaykum as for that man. He said every time he sent salutations to Aba Abdullah, every time he got a response from Aba Abdullah. He said it was a young man. You'd say, well, maybe some scholar, sheikh, buzurg, what not? No. An ordinary young man. So I decided to go after him. Because me, I've been saying assalamu alaikum ya Aba Abdullah for all these years and I have not been getting the response. What have you done that you're getting this response? He said, I followed him. And then when I was able to gain his attention, I asked him, can I sit with you for a few minutes? He said, yes. He said, I need to ask you a question. He said, what is it? He said, I just heard that you sent salutations to Aba Abdullah and he responded to you. What is it that you have done that you are beneficiary and the recipient of the jawab of Abu Abdullah. He said, I'd rather not say. He said, I'll keep it with me. I want to know what have you done. He said, if you insist, I'll tell you. He said, I married into a family, a very honorable family. They were well known and respected in our tribe in, in, in Iraq. And they were very honorable people. But after marriage, I found a defect, an ab in my spouse. And I could have easily left and I could have easily exposed them for what they had done. But my wife asked, because of the honor and the respect that their tribe and their father has in this qabila, can you just keep it to yourself? He said, I had all the right in the world to go ahead and speak about the uyub that she had. But because of the honor that she gave me, I kept a lid on it and never spoke about it. You know, the whole concept of fasq in, in nikah, you have the right. If there are certain defects in the spouse, the nikah could be fasq. And you have the right to do so. Shariat gives you the permission. He said, because I did not reveal those defects ever since then, every time I would come and say, Assalamu alaikum, Ya Abdullah, Imam would respond to my salam. What did he do? He covered and concealed the defect of another individual and he was now the recipient of Imam's tawajjuh. We have this social media in our hands. 
We find out about someone, someone's leaked secrets, WikiLeaks, and then we want to go ahead and put it on this media so that everyone else can also find out about it. What is the philosophy is why that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sattarul uyub? Why can't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just go ahead and reveal everyone's secrets and make it that much easy? Reason is that if Allah reveals the secrets of all to us, then the sanctity and the sin will become even more common. He'd rather that a son does not find out about the misdeeds of the father. He'd rather the student does not find out about the mishaps of the teacher. The sanctity between these two individuals will be gone. And that is the reason Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps a lid on it. Second thing, whoever protects their tongue, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will hide their ayyub. Rawaya says, from Amirul Mu'mineen, Imam al Muttaqeen Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salatu wa salam. Man hafiza lisanahu satarallahu awratahu. Whoever protects their tongue, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will hide their private parts and awrat and their defects and their uyub. Quran says this. Humazatin lumaza. Wailun likulli. Woe unto these individuals. And if you refer to Surah Tawbah in 79 and 80, Allah also condemns a group of people. Alladina yalmezuna. Those who mock others for their contributions, which may not be as big as yours. Now that the word has come, we have been pursuing this, and alhamdulillah, you've been responding. This is indeed an opportunity which has been emphasized a great deal over and over. So therefore, let it be known, whatever you give, الَّذِينَ لَا يَلْمِزُونَ مُطَوِّعِينَ We will be amongst those who are not going to go ahead and mock and slander that why are you giving so little? Give whatever you can. Quran stops us from mocking anyone from whatever contribution they can make. And it's not something which is big that we are looking. We're looking for something nominal. But as long as it's done in congregation. That is why you never ask, please give us this much or that much. Whatever amount that you can contribute. And when you do contribute, you know, we will not be amongst those who are mocking and ridiculing. This information is with us, with me, and inshallah we'll keep a lid on it. Not to expose, because sometimes people might be saying, you know, I can only contribute, for example, 25 or 50, but it will look bad while others are giving so much. You'll never feel that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was never looking for the quantity. He was always looking for the khulus in whatever you give. A penny given in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is better than a million given for the sake of gaining people's attention. And giving during your lifetime is better than giving after you have left this world. It's very easy to give and say, well, I'll give this when I leave this world. My wasiyat is to give this. It takes a heart to go ahead and separate that which you have, hardly, uh, have earned with hard earned money to separate in this world. You know an example of separating something? Hazrat Ibrahim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestows him with this son at an old age. Minal kibare, when he was old, advanced in age. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, give him back to us. The detachment from the worldly, this is a son of his. He said, why is, are you comparing son with money? Al-mal wal banoon. Zinatul Hayat al Dunya. Ayat of Quran says that. Mal and Banun are together. They are the zinat of this worldly life. Wal baqiyatu salihat khairun in the Rabbika thawaban wa khairun amala. It's the baqiyatu salihat. Hazrat Ibrahim was given the son at an old age. Falamma balaga ma'ahu sayyim. When he was old enough to help out his father, Allah says, Give him back to us. Detach him from yourself. We want to see how, how much have you connected yourself to your son. And if you are willing to detach. Hazrat Ibrahim did not question once. 
he did ask his son, what is your opinion? And then he went to go ahead and do what he was asked to do. What was he asked to do? He was asked to disconnect and detach, which he dearly loved, his own son. You and I have the opportunity. Inshallah, we're not being asked to detach your sons and your daughters from yourself. But this mal that we have, which is going to be fana anyway. Whatever you have is bound to extinguish whatever is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is baqi. Ayat the Quran. Whatever is with you will, will perish. But whatever is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is bound to remain. So wouldn't you rather have an account open over there where it is continuous and beneficial than keeping all over here in the accounts and which does not give similar benefit in the hereafter. So this was the plea. While we are on this subject that whoever protects their tongue, there's so much that could be said about this, but it will become a darse akhlaq, so I'll skip through it. That whoever protects their tongue, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will keep satr and protect their honor and their dignity. Number three, whoever controls their anger, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will cover their, conceal their defects as well. Rabbi says from our sixth Imam, Imam Jafar al Sadiq alayhi salatu wa salam. Man kaffa ghadabahu. Whoever is able to suppress their anger. You know, sometimes the anger I'm not talking about which you lash out on those whom you don't know. But anger on those who are close to you. Sometimes when parents are old and they may not be as tech savvy as you are they may not be able to understand some of the technical things and it annoys you and you get angry at them. Sometimes you get angry with your spouse. Sometimes you get angry with your children. Now genuinely, there's nothing wrong with it. But even in those genuine areas where you get angry, Imam says, Man kaffa ghadabahu satar Allahu awratahu. Whoever is able to Suppress that anger. Even if it's a genuine anger, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will cover and shield your awrat and will cover and shield your defects as well. I'm going through this quickly. Number four, whenever a person clothes another person. This is amazing. Who clothes another person? So many examples are now available that many a place people are going through hunger. They don't have adequate you know, food. They don't have adequate libas. So many drives for you know, libas and jackets and you know, uh, food and whatnot. These are opportunities for you. Ravaya says, Innama ayyuma mu'minin kasa mu'minan min oran lam yazal fi satrullahi wa hifsihi. Whoever clothes Another individual, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, will clothe him on the day of judgment. You know why? There was a person, companions of Sixth Imam were sitting with him. They asked Imam some questions and then Imam said to him, I can guarantee that faqir who's on that street right now, who's usually found on that street, that faqir is a guaranteed paradise. And the companions they were puzzled. They were like, how come, Mawla? We are always with you and you have never said something like this regarding us that any one of us is guaranteed paradise. But that faqir who has never come to your barga, that faqir who's always just laying over there on that street, we don't even know if he prays and he worships and he does any of those things because we haven't seen him in that. And you're saying he's guaranteed jannat? Imam said, yes. So Why? He said, because he did something for which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guaranteed it for him. He said, what did he do? He said, there was a man who was walking by who didn't have anything to wear. He asked for it. That faqir gave his cloak to that man. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loved this action of this man and gave him paradise. They all went running to this faqir. They come to him and they wake him up from his slumber. And he says to, they say to him, congrats, Imam just... Confirm that you are bound to Jannah. 
He said, what have I done? He said, Imam said that you gave your libas and uh, um, abba to someone. He said, by God, when I, comm- when I did that, there wasn't a soul on this street that saw that action of mine. I did that in complete secrecy, in private, privacy, that no one else was there to watch my action except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I know where Allah places his risalat. And that is why he's imam of the ummah who sees the actions of his people. So therefore, make sure providing someone with clothes, how simple is that? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will provide you with clothes on the day of judgment. Salat biji Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. And lastly, Hazrat Musa asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Oh Allah, Oh Allah, who will be the recipient of your satr? فَمَنْ فِي سَطْرِكَ يَوْمَ لَا سَطْرَ إِلَّا سَطْرُكَ Who will be the recipient of your satr on the day when there is no covering for anyone? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responded by saying, قَالَ الَّذِينَ يَذْكُرُونِي فَأَذْكُرُكُمْ those who remember me, I remember them. And if you do the dhikr of Allah, Allah will remember you. And that person will be the recipient of the satr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, the dhikr that we are gathered here for. We are gathered to do the dhikr of Amir al Mu'mineen. Now, Rabayat, how many times have you heard this? But every time you hear, it brings that. Josh and Valvala in you. Rasulullah was sitting and he talks about the dhikr of Ahlul Bayt. What does he say? He said uh, in regards to the dhikr of Ahlul Bayt, alayhi wa sallatu wa salam, salamu alayhi Muhammad wa alayhi Muhammad. That whoever does the dhikr of Ali Whoever embellishes their gatherings with the dhikr of Ali ibn Abi Talib, the zinat makes that to be the zinat of their majalis, it is considered to be ibadat. And right away, people would question why is Rasulullah giving us the you know, advice to do the dhikr of Ali? And then Rasulullah continued, Fa inna dhikrahu. Zikri. Because when you remember Ali, he says, Zayyanu majalisakum bi zikri Ali ibn Abi Talib. Give zina to your majalis with the zikr of Ali. People question, why do you want us to give the zina to our majalis with the zikr of Ali? There are still heads who would be questioning this hadith today had it not been for Rasulullah to complete this hadith. Because Rasulullah said, Fa'inna zikrahu zikri. When you remember Ali, you remember me. Even today, people say, well, Rasulullah is dead. Why would you want to do his dhikr? Miladun Nabi is haram. It's a bid'at. Rasulullah says, fa'inna dhikri dhikrullah. When you remember me, you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're not going to question on the dhikr of Allah, right? Or you have problem with the dhikr of Allah as well. He said, no, we don't have any problem with dhikr of Allah. Why dhikr of Allah is something which will provide satr for us on the day of judgment. He says, Zayyinu majalisakum. Embellish your gatherings. Give zina to your gatherings with the dhikr of Ali. If you question why, because his dhikr is my dhikr. He said, why should we do your dhikr? Because my dhikr is dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And zikr of Allah is ibadat. Therefore, zikr Ali is ibadat. What you're doing over here, when you remember the fadail of Ali and the masaib of Ali, this is also part of your ibadat. We are going to connect one ibadat with another ibadat. We did an ibadat over there. We came here for the second portion of the ibadat. We're going to go back to the third portion of ibadat, inshallah. That's how our ibadat will continue, inshallah, tonight. Just one narration in regards to Amir al-Mu'mineen and has been the theme we spoke about the ilm of Ali in the past two nights. This riwayat is in Ihtajaj and in other places as well where a group of Jews came to the second caliph 
They came and they asked him, and they said to him that you are Khalifatul Muslimin. He said, yes. He said, you are Waliul Amr. He said, yes. He said, whoever is Waliul Amr of Rasulullah, we will ask you these questions. If you're able to answer, then we'll know that you are the Waliul Amr and that your Nabi was on Haq and your Deen is on Haq. A lot at stake here, no? Now, of course, these Jews came and they asked this question. He said, Inna nuridu an nas'alaka an khisalin in akhbartana biha alimna anna al-Islam. If you tell us about these things, we'll know that Islam is haq. We'll know that Muhammad is Nabi. But if you are unable to tell us, then we know that Islam is batil. And Muhammad was not a Nabi or a true Nabi for that matter. Our Nabi is true Nabi. And of course, Allah is at stake. Second Khalifa responded by saying, Fas'alu amma bada'alakum. Ask whatever you want. He didn't say saluni, but he said, ask whatever is on your minds. Right away they said, Akhbirna an akfal samawat. Tell us about the locks of the heavens. What are the locks of the heaven? Tell us about the keys of the heavens. Tell us about that qabr which was traveling with its sahib in it. What is that qabr? Tell us about that which was given in dar warned by a Nabi which was neither amongst the men or the jinn. Tell us about those five things that walked on this earth, but they were not born in the womb of a mother. Tell us about the place upon which the sun shined only once and then never to shine again. And then there were some other questions. For the sake of brevity, I'll skip through them. Now, of course, when they asked these questions, the second Khalifa, he says, Qala fa umar ra'asahu fil ard. He put his head down and he said, La ayba li umar. There's nothing to be ashamed of in yus'al amma la ya'lamu. When he's asked of something which he does not know, to say la alamu bihi. I'm not aware of it. There's no shame in me saying that I don't know. We learn that all the time, right? If someone asks you a question, if you don't know, don't make things up. Just say, I don't know. It takes a bigger person to say, I don't know. Yeah, for you and I, it is correct. But not for Khalifatul Muslimin. Especially when deen is at stake. Especially when iman is at stake. Especially when Rasulullah's nubuwat is at stake. You can't just say, la alam. I don't know. So right away, these Yahudis, he said, فَوَثَبَ الْيَهُودِ فَقَالُوا They said, نَشْهَدُ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا لَمْ يَكُنْ نَبِيًّا We bear witness that Muhammad was not a Nabi. وَأَنَّ الْإِسْلَامَ بَاطِلْ And Islam is batil. Right away, Salman al-Farsi was there for rescue. Has he been all this time? He said, hold on with that thought. If one person is ignorant of these things, does that mean everyone else is ignorant of all of these things? If one is showing ajizi that he does not know, does that mean there isn't someone who can respond to all your questions? Hold on to that thought and let me grab Abu Hassan Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salatu wa salam. Yeah. They bring him in, Imam comes, says the same thing, ask whatever you want. He repeats the questions. Imam says, Akfalu Samawat Ashirku Billah. You want to know what is what locks up the heavens? What are the locks of the heavens? Whenever you do shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Shirk is the lock of the heavens. And then he says, You want to know the mafati, the, the keys to the heavens? Shahadatu Allah ilaha illallah wa anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh. 
when you bear witness sallu ala muhammad wa ali muhammad when you bear witness that there's no god except allah and nabi muhammad is the messenger of allah when soon as amil mu'minin said that yanduru ba'dhum ila ba'd wa yaquluna sadaqal fata they start looking at each other and say yes this young man is telling the truth he said hey, as far as that qabr is concerned which was traveling with its makin in it it was the qabr of uh, hazrat yunus ibn mata fasara bihi fil bihar sab'a that hazrat yunus was in the belly and it was traveling with hazrat yunus and it was his temporary abode as if it was his qabr and that creation that was worn by a nabi which was neither jinn or ins it was that namul Oh, in the time of Hazrat Sulaiman, when he had spoken to him, Ya ayyuhan namal, uskunu or utkhulu masakinakum, la yahtamanna Sulaiman wa junooduhu. That namal which, is, the jam, namal which said, when heard that Sulaiman is coming with his army, he said, oh people, oh namals, get inside these ants, get inside your houses. Why? Sulaiman is coming with his army. They will not even know and they'll crush us. for that hazrat sulaiman said how dare you go ahead and associate something with nabi of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he will be la yashurun no we are aware of even the smallest of the creatures on the earth and that that ant was summoned by hazrat sulaiman alayhi salatu wasalam and that was worn which was neither from the jinn was neither from the ins and then it says those five things which walked on the face of the earth were not born from a womb of the mother is that it was hazrat حضرت آدم حضرت حواء ناقت و صالح قبش و ابراہیم that ram that came in place of حضرت اسماعیل and the asa of حضرت موسیٰ علیہ السلام و السلام امام then continued answering the questions he said uh, all of those questions that you have and even if more questions that you have please go ahead and ask you will not leave this place uh, unsatisfied as far as my answers are concerned right away wakan al yahudu thalathatan nafarin there were three of them who had come asking these questions ithnan minhum they said nashhadu an la ilaha illallah two of them moved forward and said we believe that there's no god except allah and we believe that muhammad is the abd and the rasul of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala salli <laughs> ala The third one had some reservations. He was hesitant to believe. So right away, he said, "Fakala ya Ali, laqad waqa fi qulub ashabi ma waqa fi qalbi min al iman wa tasdiq." Yes, there's iman in my heart as well. There's tasdiq in my heart as well. But I have some other questions. Of course, I don't have time to go into those questions. Maybe at another day. Imam said, "Go ahead and ask." He asked questions about Ashab al-Kahf, a detailed version of Ashab al-Kahf that Imam answered who were they, where were they, what was the land, who which family they belonged to, how many years they were in there, what did they ask for, who was the leader at that time, who was the king at the time, who was the nabi of the time, all the pertinent information regarding Ashab al-Kahf, Imam answered and then he said to him, "Ya Yahudi, ayuafiqu hadha ma fi tawratikum o jewish man are you agreeing what i said to you is according to what has appeared in your torah the man responded by saying faqala al yahudi ma zidt harfan wala naqast harfan you did not add one word nor did you skip one word which has appeared in our books ya abul hasan la tusammani yahudiyan o abul hasan do not call me a jew fa inni fa inni ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa anna muhammadan rasulullah wa annaka alimun hadhil umma that i believe that there's no god except allah and nabi is the nabi of this ummah and you are the most knowledgeable of this ummah as well he also expressed as far as his iman is concerned now this is as far as the ilm of amir mu'minin is concerned. and there are many such riwayat that exist let me bring you towards a close There's no way to do the ihata of the ilm and the knowledge of Amirul Mu'minin and how many of the merits that would you talk about but these are the nights that you have come to shed tears you've come to express your grief for 
that Mawla, who was so generous that he's asking his killer to be, that have I not been your good Imam? Imam والسلام, after being struck and after two days have passed and this poison has penetrated deep inside the head of Imam, Imam والسلام, Tabib comes, he puts a thread in the head of Imam, lowers it, and then brings it out, and he could see the pieces of the particles of Imam's head along with it. He said, Oh, Abu Hassan, I think it is time for you to go ahead and start making your wasiyat. This is time when you should go ahead and start gathering your family and start making wasiyat. Imam والسلام, begins the wasiyat. He gathers all his family. And after gathering all his family, Imam والسلام, gives this lengthy wasiyat. He said, make sure that the world does not deceive you. Make sure that you do not abandon Quran. Lest others take lead in this Quran from you. Make sure that you do not abandon the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because if you leave the house of Allah, then nothing of your deen will remain. Make sure that you take care of the orphans. Because they will be questioning you on the day of judgment if they are not taken care of. Imam gives wasiyat after wasiyat after wasiyat. Detailed wasiyat, inshallah, we'll see if you can mention some of it tomorrow as well. After having mentioned all of these things, one of Imam's companions is sitting by the door. While Imam had asked all the companions to leave, one companion was still there. Asbagh ibn Nabata does not want to leave. And people could hear the sound of his weeping and crying. Imam heard, he said to his son, Imam Hassan, who is it that weeping outside? He said, it is Asbagh. He does not want to leave you in these last moments. Imam said, summon him, bring him inside. Asbagh comes inside. He speaks to Imam. Imam says, oh Asbagh, we'd asked you to leave. He said, Imam, how can I leave you in these last moments of your life? Imam said, oh Asbagh, do you want to hear pearls of wisdom in these last moments? He says, yes, Mawla. Imam said, that the one who does not call, say, labbaik to the command of his father, Allah's lanat is upon them. The one who does not say labbaik to the command of their mawla, Allah's lanat is upon them. And the one who does not pay the ajr of the person who has done something to them, Allah's lanat is upon them. Asbaq said, mawla, it needs further elaboration. What do you mean by this? He said, Rasulullah, on his deathbed, brought me closer, and he said the same exact thing to me. He said then to me that, O oh, Ali, ana wa Ali abawa hadhil ummah. Me and Ali are the fathers of this ummah. And the person who does not say labbaik to our command, lanat of Allah will be upon them. Then he said, me and Ali are the mawla of this ummah. And whoever doesn't say labbaik to our command, Allah's lanat will be upon them. And then he says, me and Ali have done something for this ummah which requires ajr risalat And those who don't pay ajr risalat lanat of Allah will be upon them. Imam gave these instructions to Asbagh. Asbagh also was asked to then leave. Imam والسلام, was sitting with his sons. He was holding on to their hands. And at that moment, Imam asked for Zainab. Zainab comes closer by. Imam kisses Zainab on her shoulders. Imam kisses Zainab on her neck. She says, Oh Baba, I have never seen that you kissed me on my shoulders or on on my neck, uh, Imam responded by saying, Oh Zainab, uh, very soon this neck uh, will be in the ropes, uh, and very soon your shoulders uh, will also be tied with the ropes and the shackles. Uh, and the day that happens, uh, I want to make sure that I can 
kiss those places. Zainab was in shock at that moment. She said, how can someone place a rope in the, uh, in the neck of Zainab? How can someone put Zainab into shackles? Uh, someone who is Zainab, someone who has brothers like Hassan and Hussein, and someone who has brothers like Abbas. But on the day of Ashur, uh, when the tents were burning, when everyone was killed, uh, Zainab and all the other ladies uh, were then gathered together, and the robes were being placed onto their necks, uh, Zainab responded by saying, Lakad Saddaq Amirul Mu'mineen. Indeed, Amirul Mu'mineen was correct uh, in the prediction that he had made. Ajrukum Allah, may Allah give you no grief, may Allah give you no sorrow, you'll see the Shabi of Ta'bud come out, you will do the ziyarat. I would say, oh Mawla, your Ta'bud, of course it came out at night time, last Ta'bud, in the household of Ahl Bayt, that too came out, first it was the Ta'bud of Rasulullah, then it was the Ta'bud of Fatima al-Zahra, now the Ta'bud of Ali is also coming out at night time, what is it with this family, Imam holds the hands of Hassan and Hussein and says, Oh Hassan, make sure that you do not be heedless and ignorant in regards to this deen. You know, maybe Hassan would have responded by saying, Oh Baba, mere jigar ke tukde ho jayenge, muh se khun niklega, lekin is deen pe aanch ni aane dunga. Imam Hussain ka haath pakda hoga. Eh Hussain, is deen ka khayal rakhna. Hussain ne kaha hoga. Eh Baba, سر کٹا دوں گا علی اکبر کے کلیجے میں برچی لگ جائے گی قاسم کے ٹکڑے ٹکڑے ہو جائیں گے ارے ہاں تمام شہید کر دیے جائیں گے مگر اس دین پہ آنچ نہیں آنے دوں گا امام حسین نے شاید ایک دفعہ بابا سے یہ بھی کہا ہو اے بابا میں جاؤں گا کربلا میں تو عرض کربلا کو خریدوں گا آپ بے شک مت آئیے گا اے بابا جب میں قاسم کو لے کے جاؤں گا اس کے ٹکڑوں کو اٹھاؤں گا تو آپ بے شک مت آئیے گا اے بابا جب ششمہ علی ازغر کے کلیجے میں حلقوم میں خنجر نکالوں گا آپ بے شک مت آئیے گا جب میں اپنے جوا کے سینے سے برچی نکالوں گا آپ بے شک مت آئیے گا اے بابا جب عباس کے کٹے ہوئے شانوں کو اٹھاؤں گا آپ بھلے سے لا آئیے گا لیکن بابا جب سب شہید ہو جائے اور زینب اکیلی رہ جائے روز آشور ہو تو بابا زینب کی نصرت کو آ جانا یہ جنازہ ہے علی کا شاہ خیبر گیر کا یہ جنازہ ہے علی کا یہ جنازہ ہے علی کا شاہ خیبر گیر کا یہ جنازہ ہے علی کا یہ جنازہ ہے علی کا شاہ خیبر گیر کا یہ جنازہ ہے علی کا ہائے بابا مر گیا ہے شبر و شبیر کا یہ جنازہ ہے علی کا ہائے بابا مر گیا ہے شبر و شبیر کا یہ جنازہ ہے علی کا یہ جنازہ ہے کا شاہ خیبر گیر کا یہ جنازہ ہے علی کا یہ جنازہ ہے علی کا شاہ خیبر گیر کا یہ جنازہ ہے ہا 
हाय बाबा मैं गया है शबरो शबीर का ये जनाजा है अली का शाह खैबर गिर का ये जनाजा है अली का ये जनाजा है शाहर गिर का ये जनाजा है हाय बाबा मर गया है शबरो शबीर का ये जनाजा है अली ये जनाजा जो महात्मी हजरात पीछे खड़े हैं वो महात्मी के लिए आगे आ जाएं आज आप लोग सारे पीछे महात्मी के लिए खड़े आगे आ जाएं बहुत जगह है आगे ये जनाजा है अली ये जनाजा है अली का शाह खैब गिर का ये जनाजा है अली का ये हल्के खोल रहे हैं आप लोग बहुत जगह है पीछे हल्के खोल रहे हैं मातम करना चाह रहे हैं लोग और पीछे हो जाएं आप लोग प्लीज इर का ये जनाजा है अली का ये जनाजा है अली का शाह खैबर का ये ज आगे ऊपर आ जाओ साथ पढ़ लेंगे आ जाओ ऊपर आ जाओ आ जाओ ऊपर ये जनाजा है अली का शाह खैबर का ये जनाज है अली का ये जनाजा शाह खैबर गिर का हाय बाबा मर गया है शबरो शबीर का जनाजा है अली का ये जनाजा है का शाह खैबर गिर का ये बिस्मिल्ला अली का ये जनाजा है अली का शाह खैबर गिर का ये जनाजा है अली का हाय बाबा मैं गया है शबर शबीर का ये नाजा है अली का शाह खैबर गिर का ये जनाजा है अली का अली का शाह खैबर गिर का ये जनाजा है अली का ये जनाज है अली का शाह खैबर गिर का ये अली का गम अली की बेटियों के फिर से ताजा हो गए फिर से ताजा हो गम अली की बेटियों के फिर से ताजा हो गए फिर ताजा हो गए गम भी भूली कहाँ थी मादर दिलगीर का नाजा है अली का का शाह खैबर गिर का ये जनाजा है अली का सब मिल के जवाब दें शाह खैबर गिर का ये जनाजा है हाय बाबा मैं गया है शबरो शबीर का ये जनाजा है अली बाप की मैया से जैना काल पटना बार बार काल पटना बार बार 
है बाप की मैया से जैनब कल पटना बार बार कल पटना बार बार दिल हिला देता है मैया जैना काल पटना बार बार काल पटना बार बार दिल हिला देता है रोना शाह की हम शीर का ये जनाजा है अली का ये जनाजा है अली का है बरगीर का ये है अली आज बाबा मर गया है शबरो शबी का ये जनाजा है अली का सदाने लगी है सदाने लगी फातिमा जहरा के मर से सदाने लगी है सदाने ये मसायब रह गया था क्या मेरी तकदीर का ये ताजा हाय बाबा मर गया है शब शबीर का ये जनाजा है हाय बाबा मर गया है शब शबीर का ये जनाजा है का शाह है बरगीर का ये जनाजा है अली का बरगीर का ये जनाजा है अली का ये जनाजा है अली का शाह बरगीर का ये जनाजा है अली का नजर में जाने अली को क्या ख्याल आता रहा क्या ख्याल आता रहा नजर में जाने अली को क्या ख्याल आता रहा क्या मुँह कभी जैनब का देखा और कभी जनाजा है अली का ये जनाजा है अली का शाह बरगीर का ये जनाजा है अली का हाय बाबा मर गया है शबरो शबीर का ये जनाजा है अली का ये जनाजा है अली का शाह बरगी का ये जनाजा है नज में जाने अली को क्या ख्याल आता रहा क्या ख्याल आता रहा नज में जाने अली को क्या ख्याल आता रहा क्या ख्याल आता कभी जैनब का देखा और कभी शबी का ये जनाजा है अली का ये जनाजा है अली का शाह है बरगीर का ये जनाजा है अली का जनाजा 
شاہ خیبر گیر کا یہ جنازہ ہے علی کا یہ جنازہ ہے علی کا شاہ خیبر گیر کا یہ جنازہ آج بابا مر گیا ہے شبر و شبیر کا یہ جنازہ ہے علی کا یہ جنازہ ہے علی کا بیٹیوں کو دیکھتے ہیں اور روتے ہیں علی اور روتے ہیں بیٹیوں کو دیکھتے ہیں اور روتے ہیں علی اور روتے ہیں علی آئے وہ ظالم تصور شام کی تشہیر کا یہ نازا ہے آئے بابا مر گیا ہے شبر و شبی یہ جنازہ ہے علی کا یہ جنازہ ہے علی کا شاہ خیبر گیر کا یہ جنازہ ہے علی کا یہ جنازہ شاہ خیبر گیر کا یہ جنازہ ہے علی کا یہ جنازہ علی کا شاہ خیبر گیر کا یہ جنازہ ہے آئے بابا مر گیا ہے شبر و شبیر کا جنازہ ہے علی کا یہ جنازہ ہے علی کا شاہ خیبر گیر کا یہ جنازہ ہے علی کا باپ کی میس زینب کالی پٹنا بار بار کار پٹنا بار بار باپ کی میس زینب کالی پٹنا بار بار کار پٹنا بار بار دل ہی نہ دیتا تھا رونا شاہ کی ہم شیر کا یہ جناز آئے بابا مر گیا ہے شبر و شبیر کا یہ جنازہ ہے علی کا یہ جنازہ آخری شیر کا شاہ خیبر گیر کا یہ جنازہ ہے آئے بابا مر گیا ہے شبر و شبیر یہ جنازہ ہے علی کا شاہ خیبر گیر کا یہ جنازہ ہے علی کا یہ جنازہ ہے علی کا شاہ خیبر گیر کا یہ عزا ہے علی کا نظم جانے علی کو کیا خیال آتا رہا کیا خیال آتا رہا نظم جانے علی کو کیا خیال آتا رہا کیا خیال آتا رہا مو کبھی زینب کا دیکھا اور کبھی شبیر کا یہ جنازہ ہے آئے بابا مر گیا ہے شبر و شبیر کا یہ نازہ ہے علی کا
خائے شور مسجد کوفا میں ہے بپا کیسا یہ شور مسجد کوفا میں ہے بپا کیسا یہ شور شور مسجد کوفا میں ہے بپا کیسا یہ شور مسجد کوفا میں ہے بپا کیسا یہ شور مسجد کوفا میں ہے بپا شور مسجد کوفا میں ہے بپا سجدے میں قتل ہو گیا سجدے میں قتل ہو گیا داماد مصطفیٰ قتل ہو گیا سجدے میں قتل ہو گیا داماد مصطفیٰ زخمی ہوئی جو حیدر کرار کی جبین جبریل خاکڑا کے یہ پڑھتے ہیں مرفیا کیسا یہ شور مسجد کوفا میں ہے بپا گھر تلک گئی فریاد کی صدا حسنین سے یہ زینبو حسنین سے یہ زینبو کلسوم نے کہا مسجد میں مہو غم دیکھا پدر کو خون میں زخمی بچشم نم لے آئے گھر میں باپ کو گھر میں باپ کو کرتے ہوئے بکا کیسا یہ شو Yes, sure.
قیامت سغرا بپا ہوئی بے واریتی مکی واریتی مکی آنے لگی صدا کیسا یہ شور مسجد کوفہ میں ہے بپا کیسا یہ شور مسجد کوفہ گھر کو حسن کو سوپ کر غازی سے یہ کہا تیرے حوالے آج سے زینب کی ہے ردا زینب کے بعض اچوم کے پڑھتے تھے مرفیا ایسا یہ شور مزید کوفہ میں ہے بپا کیسا یہ شور مزید کوفہ میں ہے بپا کیسا یہ شور مزید کوفہ میں ہے بپا گھر سے ابو تراب کا تابوت جب اٹھا سب بیٹیوں کے بین تھے بس وا مصیبتا ماتم علی کا ہر گلی علی کا ہر گلی کوچے میں تھا بپا ایسا یہ شور مزد کوفہ میں ہے بپا مرقد میں بی بی فاطمہ کرنے لگی یہ بین اب ہو گیا جہان میں تنہا میرا حسین مادر کی قبر چھوڑ کر قبر چھوڑ کر جائے گا کربلا کیا بین تو نے لکھ دیئے اے مظہر عبدی ہے لب پہ کامران کے نوحہ فقط یہی کوفے کی انفضاؤں میں تک ہے یہ صدا کیسا شور مزید کوفہ میں ہے بپا کیسا یہ شور مزید کوفہ میں ہے بپا مسجد ہے قتل گا جناب امیر کی مسجد ہے قتل گا جناب امیر کی مسجد ہے قتل گا 
हाजना बे अमीर की मस्जिदी मस्जिदी है कतल गा जनाबे अमीर की मस्जिदी है कतल गा जनाबे अमीर की मस्जिदी है कतल गा जना बे अमीर की मस्जिदी है कतल गा जना बे अमीर की मस्जिदी है कतल गा जनाबे अमीर की मस्जिदी है कतल गा जनाबे अमीर की राम से मस्जिदी है कतल गा जना बे अमीर पेशानी खू में तय है पेशानी खू में तय है नबी के वजीर की मस्जिदी है कतल गा जना बे अमीर की पेशानी खू में तय है पेशानी खू में तय है नबी के वजीर की मस्जिदी है कतल गा जना बे अमीर की बदला लिया गया है अली से नमाज में बदला लिया गया है अली से नमाज में थी दुशी मनी रसूल से थी दुशी मनी रसूल से रोजे वधीर के मस्जिदी बदला लिया गया है अली से नमाज में बदला लिया गया है अली से नमाज में थी दुशी मनी रसूल से थी दुशी मनी रसूल से रोजे वधीर की मस्जिदी है कतल जैन अपने जान कैसे ऐलान ये सुना जैन अपने जान कैसे 
ऐलान ये सुना मैयत उठा ली जाइए मैयत उठा ली जाइए जनाबे अमीर की मस्जिद है कतल आखिरी शेर जैनब ने जान कैसे ऐलान ये सुना जैनब ने जान कैसे ऐलान ये सुना मैयत उठा ली जाइए मैयत उठा ली जाइए जनाबे अमीर की मस्जिद है कतल गा जनाबे Dear brothers, please kindly make your way into the masjid as they will be starting the amal. Thank you very much. But Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad.